Fallout New Vegas has a large arsenal of weapons that players can use to dispatch enemies. But what if you wanted to use something a little less lethal? Something cattle ranchers and NCR military police use on a daily basis. That's right, in today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat Fallout New Vegas using only a cattle prod. After Benny capped me, I woke up, chose a name, and made my character, choosing 9 strength to deal more damage, 9 intelligence for more skill points, 6 luck for a small boost to all skills, and 1 charisma. You know why. In the other room, I chose melee weapons, sneak, speech, and chose the wild wasteland trait. Before leaving, I took everything I could, sold it straight back to him, and grabbed the snow globe from the Good Springs graveyard. Now, there's a bunch of places you can grab a cattle prod from, but I decided to head to the NCR Military Police HQ at the Strip, where three cattle prods could be found at once. Instead of helping Good Springs, I traded with Chet, grabbed all the Sunset Sarsaparilla I could find, and left. I decided to try and pass through Bitter Springs. It looked like a much shorter route, but it was also deadlier. I had nothing to defend myself against the Cazadors and Rad Scorpions, but that would just make things more interesting. As soon as I started running, the Rad Scorpions came after me. I knew I could outrun them, so I ran to the left towards the road, saw the flying death factories we all know and love, and apparently started a turf war between the two creatures. As they were fighting, I thought maybe I could sneak away, but in the time it took me to think that, the scorpions were dead, and the Cazadors were flying after me. Their attacks were deadly, and their venom made things even worse. I used anti-venom, drank sarsaparilla, and survived long enough to leave their territory. As safe as that may sound, it wasn't because the Vipers at Bitter Springs replaced the Cazadors, and while they might not move as fast, their bullets certainly do. I couldn't attack, so I did what I was good at and started a turf war between the Vipers and Bighorners, and while they killed each other, I went to discover Red Rock Canyon. My reason for doing so was I'd have to travel here later to speak with the Khans towards the end of the main quest. In truth, you only have to discover their location so I was hoping that by doing it now, I could avoid doing it later. I'll let you see how that turns out in a little while. With the way forward clear, I headed for Camp McCarran, got attacked by fiends, tried to lose them through the Samson rock crushing plant, didn't, and focused on the air traffic control tower at Camp McCarran. In doing so, I didn't see the frag mines, got blown up, used a doctor's bag, and ran away from the pursuing fiends. The sight of NCR troopers was a relief, as they could defend me, and they had already killed a few fiends, so I did some looting and made it to Camp McCarran. Inside, I bought an NCR uniform from Daniel in the Armory, put it on, and rode the monorail to the Strip. Exiting the monorail station, I once again ignored Mr. House's request to visit him, instead heading south towards the NCR Embassy. Inside the Embassy is Captain Mary Pappas, she has the key to the armory, where the cattle prods are stored. The only problem is that we kind of have to steal it. You can either wait for her to go to sleep, or wait for her to start doing press-ups and then snag the key while the other troopers aren't looking. With that done, we can take the key to the military police HQ across the plaza, unlock the storage door, and lo and behold, three cattle prods that we can permanently borrow. Now, the conditions of the cattle prods are pretty terrible, but we can repair them together and then use weapon repair kits to improve them to something a little more acceptable. At this point, I should have headed for the tops and spoke with Benny, but for some reason I wanted to level up and forgot you do exactly that by entering the tops casino. So I ran around freeside killing thugs, discovering locations, and killing fiends, until I hit level 2, increasing speech and melee weapons to 50. With a melee weapon skill of 50, I now had access to the cattle prod's unique ability. The attack is called Lights Out, can be used through vats, and deals an additional 25% damage. I wasn't sure how much I would be using this new ability, but it was nice to know I had the option. I also chose the Black Widow perk, traded with the Gunrunners, and went to speak with Benny. As soon as I entered the tops, my cattle prod was taken away, I left, 
tried going through every set of doors in the hopes of being able to avoid talking to the chairman, couldn't, and leveled up twice to level 4, increasing medicine, repair, speech, and choosing the educated perk. Benny was thrilled to see me, however I couldn't convince him to join me at the presidential suite, and I didn't want to sleep with him again, so I went to the suite alone, looted what I could, and convinced him to let me live, which was a mistake, because the first thing I did was go to his suite, speak to Yes Man, learn about his master plan, and leveled up two more times to level 6, increasing speech, melee weapons, and choosing the bloody mess perk. On my way to track down Benny for the second time, I was given an invitation to meet both Kaiser and Ambassador Crocker. When did I become so popular? And more importantly, what had I actually done to get their attention? The road to Cottonwood Cove was all quiet until reaching the El Dorado Gas and Service, where three Vipers attacked. Before I had time to fight back, they had killed one of their own, broke my legs, and nearly killed me. But thanks to the Lights Out ability and the fatigue effect, the remaining Vipers went down and all I had to do was keep prodding until they stopped moving. To regain the lost health, I used a cardboard bed across the road and continued walking to Cottonwood Cove did some parkour outside of Nelson, poked Private Reynolds to death, and got killed by a fire gecko. On my second attempt I was more successful, knocking two fire geckos out at the same time, and alternating attacks between them until they both died. I thought about using this tactic to see if I could do the same to three geckos, but there was just too many of them to deal with, so I jumped off the cliff, died, tried again, lived, killed a Lake Lurk King, went swimming, and had Cursor Lucullus at Cottonwood Cove take me to the fort. Upon entering the fort, the Legion took away my cattle prod, I met Kaiser, met Benny, who'd been captured, went into the bunker, got the cattle prod back, and spoke to the whiny baby. Inside the bunker, I was really surprised to find out that the fatigue effect worked on robots. I also got crippled a bunch of times, used food to regain the health, which meant waiting patiently, but in the end, the Securitrons were activated, and I hit level 7, increasing medicine, melee weapons, and speech. Mr. House was happy with my decision, I dropped the cattle prod, handed everything over to the guard, picked it back up, and went outside to speak to Kaiser. In the tent, Kaiser let me kill Benny, and didn't question why or how I was using a cattle prod. We got a future together, you and me. I then hit level 8, increasing melee weapons and speech, also choosing the Super Slam perk, meaning I could now spank enemies into orbit. With that done, I went to the Lucky 38, picked up the test site snow globe, sold them both to Jane for 4,000 bottle caps, killed Mr. House with a quick prodding, and got Yes Man to take his place. So far, so good. One demonstration later, it was time to work out what to do with the other factions. You know how it is. When you come into power, you gotta know who your friends are. Fast traveling to Red Rock Canyon, I spoke with the Khans. Turns out if you've already discovered their location, then you have to speak with them. Damn it. From there, I fast traveled to Good Springs, the closest location I'd discovered to the Brotherhood so far. I started walking, killed a family of coyotes, felt sad, found some food, felt better, killed some powder gangers, and made it to the Hidden Valley. The first thing I did was go to the bunker with the ranger to kill him first, but he wasn't there, so I went to the Brotherhood's main bunker and attacked them, breaking any chance of working together so I could report back to Yes Man without getting captured and going through that whole shenanigan. But I died, so I tried again, stole the key to the bunker, which actually locks behind you once you've entered, and backed away before they could speak to me. However, I still had to attack them before I could decide their fate. So I let the talker come to me, refused to cooperate, shut the door, and left before he could kill me. I had no intentions of getting the power armor training this time, because as you may have noticed in the last video when fighting the Legate, I kind of forgot to put it on. I know, biggest brain in the west. Before leaving Hidden Valley I killed a bunch of bark scorpions, no big deal, and hit level 9, increasing speech to 90, and melee weapons to 83. With the Brotherhood done, I went to speak with the Boomers, made a bet with George, grabbed the power armor because I planned to sell it for something better than I was currently wearing, 
survived the bombardment, met Pearl, and left to speak with the casino owners back at the Strip. It doesn't take much, just a brief chat with Mortimer at the Ultralux and an Omerta thug at Gamora is all that's needed. Back at the Lucky 38, I told Yes Man to leave the factions alone, said I don't care what happens to President Kimball, and got the override chip to use at the El Dorado substation. Doing so would allow Yes Man to direct the substation's power elsewhere. Not sure where because I didn't ask, but if Yes Man wants it, then it must be a good thing. The substation was a breeze. Putting on the NCR uniform I bought from Daniel got me inside without any trouble. A few buttons later and the deed was done. The only thing left to do was to prepare for the second battle of Hoover Dam. The condition of the cattle prod was okay, but I had no idea how it would withstand going up against the Centurions and then the Legate himself, so I decided to gather up some weapon repair kits as well as getting the reinforced Mark II combat armor and helmet from the Gunrunners. As for the weapon kits, I tried waiting for the Gunrunners to restock. Three days passed and they still didn't have any, so I went elsewhere, collecting one from Gene Skydiving, one from Nipton, and on my way to grab a third from the Poseidon gas stop, I was attacked by legionary assassins, who certainly lived up to their name. Not once, not twice, but three times. Even when I was able to knock one over, the others took me out. In the end, I had no choice but to hightail it out of there. I could have lowered the difficulty, but I decided not to and just ran away instead. Despite being assassins, they didn't try that hard to track me down, allowing me to safely grab the weapon repair kit inside the police car and fast travel back to Freeside to buy stim packs from Julia Farkas and then tell Yes Man it was time to wrap things up. At the dam, the Great Khan warriors were used as cannon fodder, and the Centurions were a massive problem. Getting close to them prompts them to switch to a super sledge, which they all use, and it only takes a couple of hits to kill me. There's hardly any room for error, and even with VATS, the fatigue effect, lights out, and grand slam abilities, I was barely a threat. I hate to admit this, but if it wasn't for the Securitron companion, I would have had to lower the difficulty. I did my best to do what I could, but it ultimately came down to distracting them and letting the Securitron take the kill. Even though the Centurions were a problem, there were still Prime Legionaries who I could kill, meaning I didn't feel completely useless. Entering the dam, the Securitron disappeared, leaving me and my cattle prod to take care of business. At the control room, I swatted the NCR heavies, tried to get them both down and then keep them down, and for the most part, it seemed to work until an NCR trooper came around the corner and got in the way. Fortunately, he didn't take that long to kill, and the heavies were still down by the time he was dead. So I just finished them off and went to the control room to install the override chip, allowing me to send power to the fort and increase my Securitron army. But first I had to activate the power plant. Oh yeah, the Securitron companion reappeared, not sure where he ran off to, but I was sure glad to see him again. Two Prime Legionaries later, and I was standing in the Eastern Power Plant, where I flicked the switch to send the power, and it was done. All I had left to do was fight my way to the Legate's camp and kill Lanius. Back outside, I did my best to kill the Centurions, but they were just too strong, and now they had chainsaws and thermic lances. If you're wondering about the NCR armor, I'm trying to blend in so I only had to deal with the Legionary, and I wanted to save as much of the Mark II's condition as I possibly could for the Legate. In the end, I decided to see this section as the same as following Liberty Prime to the Jefferson Memorial in Fallout 3. I could get involved and try to kill something, or I could let the robots do the work and loot the bodies. At the Legate's camp, I killed the Praetorian Guard, put on his clothes, and then took them straight off, because the Securitron companion was still alive, and I thought perhaps we could take out the remaining forces together. I convinced the Legate to fight me, and instead of him going for me, he went for the Securitron instead, busting him in about three swings, and then he came after me. I used Vats, but that didn't much help, because I was dead before I could even finish my attack. Reloading, I wore a disguise, let the other Praetorians kill the Securitron so he didn't get in the way, and convinced the Legate to fight me one on one. He was an honorable man after all, and with a speech skill of 90, it wasn't as if he had a choice. 
As the battle began, I jumped down, saved, got hit, and was a single swipe away from dying when I got lucky. The fatigue effect got to work, and Lanius went down. As he was getting back up, I knocked him down again, this time over the edge of a small drop. Without hesitating, I jumped down after him, healed, and for 2 minutes and 28 seconds, I slowly prodded the Legate into submission. He wasn't dead, but he was no longer hostile either, allowing me to hit level 10, increasing melee weapons to 100, and choosing the here and now perk to level up again to level 11, increasing medicine to 50. 45 seconds later, the Legate couldn't take a single prod more. He was done. It wasn't an honorable death like he would have wanted, but how honorable can dying to a cattle prod really be? With carpal tunnels setting in, I went to the main gate, met General Lee Oliver, let Yes Man prove his mettle, and the run was officially complete. So to answer the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with a cattle prod? Yes, yes you can. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.